Focus your attention right here. The mind will be creating other here's to carry you away from it right here, but you don't have to go with them. And John Lee's image is having a post at the edge of the sea. The sea rises, but the post doesn't rise with the sea. The sea falls away, ebbs out. The post doesn't go with it. It stays right there. Try to establish your attention as consistently as you can. In Thailand, when they talk about concentration, when they translate it into Thai, they translate it as being firmly intent. In other words, the mind is not simply still and quiet, but there's a very strong intention to stay that way, to maintain this stillness. And for the time being, put aside what you've read about concentration. Don't let it get in the way of actually being right here. <coughs> In fact, even the words of this talk, don't let them get in the way of your focusing on the breath. Watching the breath as it comes in, as it goes out, and being intent to stay right here with the breath. The talk is here to encourage you. It's not to distract you. Of course, to stay right here, you need motivation. You have to understand that this is a good thing to do. And there's so much out there that would pull you away and tell you that this is not. In the world outside, they say lots of other things that are much more interesting in life. And even in books on the Dharma, they say you don't want to get stuck on concentration. You'd much rather go ahead straight to insight. That's where all the real action is. In fact, it's almost perverse. I remember reading a book on concentration. Page one, they define it. Page two, they tell you that it's dangerous before they explain anything else. Which, of course, was not the Buddha's approach. He was always encouraging people to get the mind concentrated. Jhana, right concentration, he said, was the, the heart of the path. When he told the monks to go meditate, he said, go do jhana. This is the doing of the path. And as John Lee points out, it's one of the more difficult parts of the path. It requires the most work and the most intention, which may be one of the reasons why people like to find some way around it. In John Lee's image, the three main factors of the path, virtue, concentration, discernment, are like the posts for a bridge. Virtue is the posts on this side of the river. Discernment is on the other side of the river. The concentration posts are right in the middle of the river where the current is strongest. So it takes the most work to get those posts in place. So be willing to give as much energy as you can, realizing that this is really what's going to make all the difference. You can read as much as you like about discernment, constancy, stress, not self, emptiness, whatever. But it's not really going to have a hold on the mind until the mind really settles down and can be still. Because however much the mind likes to read about those things, its feeding habits are still low. And John Cha's image of Westerners is one of those things that is right in your face. He said, Westerners are like vultures. They fly very high, but they eat very low. We like to think about abstract concepts. But when we're looking for pleasure, where do we go? We go straight for lust, all the gross sensual pleasures. We've got to train the mind to raise its standard of taste. And that's one of the functions of concentration, is to give us a better sense of pleasure, a sense of pleasure that comes not from sensuality but from form, i.e., the body as you feel it from within which doesn't require that the world outside be a certain way. 
simply that you pay attention to what you've already got here, which means there's a lot less unskillful activity involved in accessing this pleasure, maintaining it. It doesn't obscure your vision in the same way that sensual pleasures do. So concentration is actually a lot safer than not being in concentration. Because when you're not in concentration, you go back to your old sensual pleasures. And it's because of sensual pleasures that people can still <coughs> kill and steal and lie, and engage in all sorts of unskillful behavior. But you can raise the mind to this level of pleasure. Nobody's ever killed over jhana. Nobody's ever stolen anything. In fact, it makes you a lot less likely to kill and steal, because you've got something really, really good here that doesn't have to depend on anybody else. So learn to cultivate this pleasure, this sense of well-being. Look after it. Care for it. This is why the Buddha we talked about having respect for the threefold training. Step back again and said, have respect for concentration. It's part of the threefold training, but it's the part that tends to get overlooked. To realize that you've got something important here. It may not seem like much in the beginning, but if you care for it, it grows and learn how not to be impatient. It's a matter of having the right balance. Knowing how to encourage it, but not pushing it so hard that you kill it. Think of the Buddha's image of the foolish, inexperienced cow. She's got grass and water in her meadow on the hillside there, and she looks over to another hillside and she sees another meadow with grass and water, and she wonders, well, what's the grass and water over there like? And so she heads down the hill to go up the other hill. But because she's foolish and inexperienced, she doesn't know how to go down the hill properly. She gets stuck down in the ravine. And then she loses both meadows. So learn how to content yourself with what you've got and allow it to develop. Look after it, and it will grow on its own. You've got grass here. You've got water here. You've got everything you need. If you tend to this spot, wherever it is that you focus, you find congenial. The breath feels good. The mind feels at home. Tend to it, and it'll grow. And as you tend to it, you're going to learn a lot about the mind. Again, it's not the case that you drop concentration to go to discernment. You learn about the mind by tending to your concentration, noticing its ups and downs. And when it gets better, what, what did you just do when it got better? When it gets worse, well, what did you do when it got worse? When it looks like it's going to lose it's balanced to fall over. How do you get it back into balance? As you look after concentration in some way, you learn a lot about form, i.e. the form of the body, the feelings that arise as you focus on the breath, the perceptions that either keep you with the breath or pull you away, thought fabrications that, again, either help you investigate the breath or help you lose the breath and your awareness of all these things, your, con your consciousness. You learn about the five aggregates in a hands-on way by maintaining your concentration. And as you learn how to maintain it in lots of different situations, you learn lots of different things about the mind. You learn about the aggregates, you learn about which ones are skillful, which ones are not. And it's in this way that concentration leads to discernment. 
it builds on discernment and creates the conditions for more discernment. After all, if you didn't have some understanding of the mind, you wouldn't be able to get it to settle down. Once it's settled down, you can see things even more clearly. So try to develop this combination of concentration and discernment. And everything you want to know will, will appear right here.